Melissa, one of the most powerful hurricanes we've ever seen in the Caribbean. Uh, it's moving on shore right now, and you can see this picture looks a little bit better. That was Treasure Beach, Jamaica. That's a, look at the dog running across the road. See that? See, there's a guy out there, too. So things are actually loosened up just a bit. Uh, when it first, we were first looking at this about an hour ago, it was the core was about 15 miles away. Just saw a dog running across right there. So that's just, it's sad. Here to chat with us about it, it's Mike Boylan, storm chaser and blogger with uh, many followers. Mike, it's great to see you this afternoon. I appreciate it. Wish we were having a, a better conversation, but this is one, this is the most intense hurricane that I can remember besides Wilma. This is stronger though, and it's making its way across Jamaica as we speak. Yeah, it's just crazy. I mean, we watched this last week. We were talking about it, you know, and yeah. some of the models teased it, right? And um, I, I don't, you just, now you're looking at it happening. It's like, how did this happen? You know, it's the, one of the strongest on record um, in the end of October, right? When everybody thought the season was done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the most amazing thing. So if I was to tell you, all right, Mike, uh, how, how can you form the most powerful storm that we've seen so far this year and put it in the Caribbean? The, the, everything has to work out perfectly. Yes, I mean, with that ocean heat content, you know, we've talked about that in the past. Um, it's, it was just untapped. Even last year, the, uh, you know, Helene and Milton really didn't get going down there. So we really haven't had a real Caribbean storm, mm -hmm. in, you know, in several years, it seems like. Um, so, yeah, it's just it's just mind-boggling. That's, you know, 800 millibar system. Yeah. I, even typing updates today, I was typing 982 because I'm I, I, you're not used to typing 8. You know, know. You're, you're, you're used to typing 900. <laughs> right, and we were just, I was just remarking about Tropical Storm Sonia that's out in the Pacific with a low pressure of 1,003. I'm like, okay. Mm, geez, I, mean, I mean, this this is incredibly strong when you're talking about this. And and you like to dive into the models too, Mike. And my, my question yeah. is, which model do you think is prepared better for this one and which one is performing better right now? Well, I, I love the Haas models. You know, Haas A, Haas B, uh, they've been really good with intensity predictions. And, and they were predicting 880, 890, you know, almost yeah. a week ago. And we were like, uh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember we talked about it. Mm -hmm. I got called out on it. I'm like, are you kidding me? But they did really well last year. Um, it seems like the Euro track is always solid, yeah. Yeah. Uh, really good. The, the GFS was terrible. Um, it was going over Hispaniola. And the UK was like going over the Yucatan. So it was disappointing that two of the top models we used to use, you know, um, this made it, it makes it frustrating you know that's why we got to take a blend of models and overall i think the track was pretty on on point it's just I, it's just sad looking at the maps you know i was googling that area and um you know seeing some of these videos popping uh you know online and just what folks must be going through because we know what a cat five is like i mean we've seen the destruction afterwards so you know what's happening right now and um it's it's just you know, it's going to be a nightmare for these folks. Um, and then, like you mentioned, it's going across the island, and it's not going to lose much punch. Mm -mm. And when it emerges, we're going to have uh, you know, wraparound bands hitting hitting this, the, the northwest side. Um, right. So there's a lot of folks really dealing with this right now. And if it keeps on jogging to the west a little bit more, I mean, it's running out of time to do that. But it's it's going the farther west it goes, the less interaction it's going to have with land, at least the inner workings of the core. I mean, that's a bad situation for Cuba. That means it's not going to die down that much. Yeah, and they did bump that next advisory up to still yeah. Cat 4. So it's going to go through the whole island as a Cat 4. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, and, and it's a little flatter terrain on that side. So they're getting the rain still on, on the east side, which is terrible. I saw some flooding videos there. I had a, a, a friend of mine that I've met through the, the, doing my, you know, chats and stuff. And he just messaged me and said he's heard the southwest part of the island is just getting beat up bad. Like, you know, being a local, he said he's lived there he's, his whole life. He's 63, he's nothing like that. So oh, wow. we just won't know. You know, I I remember watching past storms, you know, Michael and others. And you don't know what's going on right now until tomorrow, let's say. I, even um, then, right? Even then with the infrastructure that's going to get destroyed like this. It, I, what I'm worried about also, Mike, is looking at a before and after of the, of the satellite. It's just the deforestation of that stripe of the core that's going to go over there it's going to be a drastically different west side of the island. Yeah, we've seen that in the past. Yeah. I mean, you're going to see you know, land scarred. Uh, and, and to see a storm like this with the lightning, you know, this morning, just never lose that warmth, um, you know, broke a record, right, for the the most intact eye ever. And right. uh, it just... It's just the worst case scenario for anybody. Um, and you know, the good, you know, the good news. I told people on my little chat this morning. 
one thing I learned is always folks ready to, to help. You know, I, I've mm -hmm. seen so many be people ready to fly in, you know, wanting to help. And I have a feeling that we're going to see a good outpouring of support to, to Jamaica um, afterwards. Yeah, you know? I hope you're right. So we, don't, I, I agree. We had the Minister of Energy and Transport and Telecommunications on, and he was, he was touting that as well. Our good friends around the Caribbean are going to help, is what he was saying. And I agree. And then uh, one more thing, Mike, when I look at the, uh, the track itself, it goes through the Bahamas, we know. Bermuda has a, a yeah. kick me sign on it. I mean, here we go again with Bermuda. Yeah, this still might be 100 mile an hour winds there. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, so, and they're going to be on the dirty side looking at some of those models again. Um, you know, you always feel guilty not talking about other weather, but when there's a huge story, obviously, going on, but there's still impacts down the road. We got the Bahamas and the Turks, you know, and Caicos yeah. there, and of course, Bermuda. Um, they're going to be dealing with it next. Uh, it's just, it's incredible. I just, I, I still, you know, you watch these things came, you know, this one came across Africa, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was a wave. We were talking about this two weeks, and, it, it, and here we are. It's like, I can't believe what we're looking at right now on satellite. It's I, just, it's, the fact that it held together as a tropical wave went all the way through the MDR, didn't develop until it got to the untapped Caribbean. You're right. We've been mm -hmm. watching this wave, this batch of energy now for two weeks, and, and it's incredible. We're going to be watching it for another four to five days before it finally Peels on out of here and falls apart across the northern Atlantic. Uh, Mike, it, it's been a busy day for you. I appreciate you taking the time out and talking again. Oh, you're and, yeah, let, uh, next week, hopefully, we won't be talking about anything, but uh, maybe you're throwing a, 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 maybe you're taking a first hockey puck slap or something, you know, something fun. Uh, yeah, I was teasing going up to Gatlinburg. There was supposed to be a little bit of mountain snow. Um, yes. But a couple of these buddies of mine that have planes, I might be jumping on, on one of those and flying and helping with some of the recovery. So, yeah. Might be sharing some of that with you. We'll see. Right. Um, anything I can do to help. But, you know, the one thing I want to point to that I, I, I saw the NHC started talking about this was the elevation winds. You know, we saw that with Helene, you know, and I flew over the, the Appalachians after Helene and just seeing those trees down, you know. That's crazy. They didn't yeah. have surface winds. It was that upper level winds. And, and this is what they're going to be experiencing here. So I'm really curious, that even though the hurricane winds didn't like, reach as far as they say i'm really curious the upper elevation if they really get beat beat up more than they thought yeah i mean the the, the scar on this land right there with the trees coming down it's going to be a scar for at least a decade uh, we'll talk about that again next week mike uh, mike always great to talk to you my friend and you can check him out mike boiling the weather page mike's weather page good stuff mike we'll Thank talk you. to you next week yeah Thanks, all right buddy Bye.